All right, folks, we are going to get started here. I know some people are uh, still joining in, but it is 10 o'clock, so we're going to begin. Uh, just something to start off. I'm Tanner from Supernova. Uh, and so today we are going to do a little bit of engineering. Uh, we're going to make a water wheel because uh, this week for Supernova, for our STEM groups, uh, it is the engineering theme. So I see everyone's very lively in the chat, and that's awesome. Uh, reminder, like Clayton said, uh, when the session starts, limit the chat until prompted by me, because I get that little boop every time someone says something the same as you. So it's easy to lose my concentration. And so if you have done the webinars with us before, you might remember Clayton. Uh, he's on as well, and he will be moderating the chat today to make sure I don't miss any questions or anything like that. Hello, everyone. I will be moderating the chat, but I will have my mic and video off, so I will help with all of your questions today. Okay, perfect. So, like I said, today we are doing some engineering. So, to start off, what? who knows what an engineer is? I see Joyce raised her hand. You don't have to raise your hand if you think you know the answer. Just answer me in the chat. What do you think an engineer does? Engineer is pretty broad, so I'm sure you'll be on the money. Yep, they build stuff. You are right. What else does an engineer do? What kind of stuff do they build? They build bridges. They make cars, oil rigs, mechanic cars, buildings, garages. Yes, you're right. Because being an engineer is a very broad topic because there are different disciplines. Uh, different disciplines of engineers could be chemical, mechanical, electrical. I study chemical engineering um, at Dalhousie still. I'm working for Supernova for part of my co-op for engineering. Yes, they use blueprints. Blueprints are very important. You always need blueprints. And so whenever you're designing something, you it's a good idea to sketch it out. That's why in my first year, I, uh, I took a whole class for four months where we just sketched and made front view, side views of things, and we used different color LEDs and all of that. So it's really important to have the right blueprints when you're designing your engineering stuff. So. Like I said, today we are going to make a water wheel. So has anyone heard of a water wheel before? Yes? Okay. Um, where might you find a water wheel? It's usually attached to a building. It's not used as much anymore these days. At a mill, right, a water mill. So that's exactly, exactly. So during a long, historically, before we had our like hydroelectric dams and stuff, we needed a water mill because your uncle works at one. So does anyone know what a water mill does? The water wheel, what does it do for the water mill? Any ideas? Makes electricity, filters, generates power. Makes electricity, yeah. So with our hydroelectric dams that we use nowadays, which I can talk about in a bit, um, definitely makes electricity. With the water mills, historically, we weren't really focusing on as much electricity as really basic things like milling and agriculture. So the water wheel, which is a wheel attached to the side of a mill, would turn. So what the water wheel is doing is it takes advantage of flowing or falling water. So you find the water mills in water, right, on a moving river, because we were trying to take naturally gravity from the water to power. And so what we're doing is we are transferring kinetic energy of water 
and it's going onto the wheel and it's spinning the wheel. And so once the wheel is turning, we have our shafts, which in turn would turn gears and all that. And so you can mill, which is grinding, grinding cereal and grain and stuff like that, or agriculture. So agriculture, um, that's when you're bringing all the water to cultivate land. So you're trying to grow crops. So today it's going to be pretty hands-on, okay? So that, because as an engineer, we usually do a lot of hands-on stuff. You're always using your hands, actually building things, which I hope you enjoy. So I like that we're lively in the chat, but like Clayton said, we can pause for a minute. And I posted the materials. It's pretty basic. I like that someone said the water wheel is a type of device that takes advantage of flowing or falling water to generate power by using a set of paddles mounted around a wheel. I think that was taken right from what does a water wheel do? Because I think I saw the exact same thing. So, like I said, you don't have to do this with me because I'm going to do it a lot faster than you would. Uh, to start, we have two, we need to cut circles in cardboard, which I already did. So I didn't want to be on video cutting circles in cardboard for you folks. That'll just waste some time. So what I'm going to use to make the water wheel is two pieces of cardboard. I have plastic cups, which are going to be the paddles, or in this case, buckets, more or less. I am using a barbecue skewer, if you can see that. And so what the barbecue skewer does is that's going to be right in the middle of our wheel, and so that's where it's going to turn. And so for our water wheel, it's not going to turn with the wheel, but in a real water mill, this would turn. So this would turn the shaft of, this is the shaft of the water wheel. And so that would turn, and this is what would turn the gears, which could then, it's an axis. You are right. It is an axis. And so it's going to turn, and that would turn our gears. That would, in turn, move things. So if you're having trouble picturing the gears or how it might crush something, picture a clock, right, and how the clock would tick. And that even just turns the little fingers or the little hands. And so it kind of does it the same way. But you can do a lot of things. You can also cut wood, uh, cut metal if it's strong enough. It depends on how much power you're generating. OK, so to start, I am making my buckets. So I'm going to do this all in front for you. You can see this. What I am doing, so you want to make your circle about, the reason I didn't give you the exact size of your circle is it definitely depends on your cups. Because you want your cups to be able to go around this in a way that they're not really cramped. And so you want to make your circle definitely bigger rather than smaller. So I am going to staple around this whole thing. So has anyone ever heard of kinetic energy before? OK, what is kinetic energy? Paper cups will work, yes. Force, that's fair. Energy built up when an object moves. That's a great, yes, that is. So kinetic energy of an object is the energy it possesses due to the motion of it. And so it's defined as the work needed to accelerate the body given mass from rest at its starting velocity. 
So velocity is like speed, but it's meters per second, okay? It's the same thing, but it's a vector. What? Yeah. So we water wheel is taking the energy or taking the kinetic energy from the falling water and it is transferring it into the mechanical motion. So there are actually two types of water mills, or two main types, because, well, of course, the water is, um, so the water is, uh, it can either go from the top or from the bottom, right? And so there's actually a name for both. And so it could be an overshot or an undershot. And so, because if you think of the water mill, depend how the river is set up, you could have either it going under the mill and turning it, or it might be falling from a higher place. Uh, you see a lot of the time when it's falling from a higher place, that's when it's taking, it's really working on gravity to change that mechanical energy, or change the kinetic energy into mechanical. So look, I have cups around right here. So try to keep them evenly spread out just so your water wheel turns at a solid motion, right? And so I used one, two, three, four, five, seven cups this time. You can probably fit nine maybe, depending. Don't squeeze your cups. It's much better to leave a little bit of space than to squeeze them because then your buckets won't be evenly distributed and so then they could easily break. So what I am doing now, so this is a wheel, but when you're making it, I am posting the video once it's done on YouTube for sure. We're gonna make a sandwich. And so, because we want our two sides of cardboard, you click it. Yeah, we're, we post the videos on YouTube just to make it easier for you folks. Because, like I said, I made the circle already. And it's just, it's a lot of work for something you don't know how to make. I've made a couple of these water wheels. I made one yesterday, the exact same as this one. I've also made a little one out of those little Dixie cups you might find at home. Our channel is, Clayton can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's just Supernova at Dalhousie like all of our names, or like most of our social medias are. Okay. So, now I have a water wheel built, or part of the water wheel built. I have the wheel, it spins. What am I doing next? Can anyone remember? What is my next step? Remember the word axis, shaft, attaching the axis. Yes. So let's attach our axis. You want to have it pretty much in the middle, right? Because if you're going, you don't want it to rotate in a way that isn't parallel to the other side, you really want it to just go through the exact middle, or it'll kind of just go whoop, 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 whoop. And so you want your shaft to turn. So, or you don't want, you want the shaft to turn. So you need to make your holes larger than what I have made with just the barbecue skewer. I recommend maybe using a pencil or something. And that will make a sizable hole, be careful. I use staples for my cups, by the way, and, but you don't need to use staples. If you have a lot of time, glue works just the same. And if you had enough tape and you are evenly distributed your tape to all the cups, it'd probably work pretty well too. So, you're also, my, my water wheel isn't very pretty, but, Sometimes a part of engineering is making things aesthetically pleasing. When you make a bridge, you know, you could make a big bridge that's super safe, but 
Your city also kind of wants the bridge to look nice. You're welcome to decorate your water wheel. I am going to show you the water wheel because I have set up a little, I know, what I used here, if I don't make a mess in my house, is I used a bucket and I put a couple hockey sticks across so you can see the wheel spins. And so we are pretending we are getting a feed of water that is overshot, which means it is falling from the top. And so when it goes, it's receiving the water and the water wheel will spin. And it's a continuous process because we're taking water from the river. And so this is a lot greener than a lot of processes because we're just using natural resources like water and we're using gravity. And this in turn would power because our shaft turns, which would turn gears, which you can mill, you can make cut lumber, cut metal, all kinds of things. It is tilting. Yes, I can't say I can make a perfect water wheel right off, right in 10 minutes. What I would recommend, if you don't want your water wheel to move a little bit, is just put some tape on the two sides. Spin it again. Okay, I will spin it one more time. And if you really want to, you can, once you have your water wheel, why don't you add some stuff to the sides? Try to make this turn and turn something. Really get a setup. When doing that, though, I would definitely recommend doing it outside. I don't condone making any messes in your house. So, yeah, my water wheel spins a little bit because I don't have any tape on the sides to really hold it in place. But cups work. Water wheels also can just use paddles. So if you're making a little water wheel, you could use the ends of plastic spoons. All right, so that's my water wheel. I will show you. So you can make this and other things too, because look at this one. This is a really little one. I made it with Dixie cups. Paper cups do work, but remember it's paper, so once it's getting all wet, it's it's a lot more malleable. It can move and shape a lot more, so you might not get as many uses out of it as a plastic cup water wheel. Okay, so we talked about the water wheel because historically that is what we kind of use. But do you know what we would use nowadays? They're dams, dams, yes, exactly. So water wheels aren't seen as round as much these days. Instead, have the hydroelectric dams. And so the purpose of the hydroelectric dam is to provide a place to convert the potential and kinetic energy of the water uh, to electrical energy. Like a beaver dam? Not quite like a beaver dam. Those are more just the beaver's homes. We have hydroelectric dams where it receives the water and the water turns a turbine and a generator. And so the turbine is connected to the generator that makes electricity as it spins. But after passing through the turbine, the water flows back into the river on the other side of the dam. Okay, so what other machines do we use that spin that create energy? Like power, things that spin. Am I reading something? No, I'm not reading anything. <laughs> so what spins? Windmills, that's exactly what I was looking for. What would a windmill do? What does it make? What does it convert? 
generate electricity. Yes, a windmill does generate electricity. Here's the info for the hydro dams. Okay, so now we talked a little bit about energy. We talked a little bit about electricity. I'm going to move my laptop a little bit. So I talked, what is, let's talk a little bit about engineering. What is electrical engineering? Now, because our water wheels create electric, or our hydroelectric dams more or less create electrical or electricity. So what's electrical engineering? That's a big question. Yeah, but I don't need a big answer. Just whatever you think. Yeah, fair. Okay, well, electrical engineering, I, that's a very broad question because it is, it's just taking, it's deriving from electrical potential energy and converting it into, or taking the kinetic energy and actually loosely turning it into electrical energy. And that is done with a turbine with generators. So one more question that I, a word I've used a lot is generator. What's a generator? So the name kind of comes from, you can kind of guess from the name, a generator. But so take a guess, what do you think a generator does? Generating stuff, yeah. A turbine, a turbine is connected to the generator, yes. So the generator, um, if you, with permission, I recommend looking into it because a generator is a big thing with a lot of tiny little pieces in it that all do its own work. But the only thing I was really looking for, like you said, is it generates power. So the turbine is turning and it works into the generator. And so that in turn is creating power for us. And so when you think of a water wheel in the water mill, it's, is kind of the same thing. The water mill is almost acting as the generator where all of the material is inside and moving. I'm happy you can see me now. Um, I'm glad that's working out. So yeah, like the water mill, all we've done really is taken larger scale projects and compressed them into much smaller things because engineering is all about efficiency and making things better. And so in a lot of sense, making things better is compressing it. When you don't need a giant building to do a task, it's a lot easier on us because it saves time, effort, materials, and it helps the environment. Can Niagara Falls be a hydro dam? Um, in a sense, they could, but the problem is it wouldn't really be Niagara Falls anymore. It would just be Niagara because you wouldn't have the, uh, you wouldn't have any water falling. And so that's kind of the point of Niagara Falls is to go see the beautiful waterfalls. Um, you should look into, if you're allowed, see what you can find from where are big hydro dams. I kind of looked into it. I couldn't think of any names but they're all over the world. They're here, they're in China, they're in Russia, because hydro dams are a very efficient way to generate power using water, because water is an abundant resource that we have, and it's clean, and it is, when you want to use it, it's ideal. What's your question? I see someone said I have a question. Living life is social studies, by the way. Everything is social studies. <laughs> what does the thing you made look like? I will show you the water wheel again, because I know you had trouble seeing it. 
Um, I know you had video issues. So I made this. It's a water wheel, what we've been talking about. It attaches to a water mill and it spins. So I'm going to put it into my little mill here, which is two hockey sticks in a bucket. And when you pour the water, it spins and in turn turns the turbine, which generates the power by transferring kinetic energy into mechanical movement. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are very excited about this. I really hope that means you will want to do it as well. Did anyone try to make this at home or is going to make it at home? Good, good. So, like I said, the size of the wheel depends on the size of your cups, Dixie cups, plastic cups. These plastic cups are about this big, so if you can tell, it's not very tall. All right, folks, so that's pretty much it. I built the water wheel for you, talked to you about kinetic energy, and talked to you about engineering. That is what we're doing this week for Supernova. I hope. Uh, Hope you guys are in the activities. And so now I'm just going to stick around because I know you have lots of questions. Um, I want to answer them. So what questions do you have left for me? <laughs>